of your mind. Oh, stay on. I heard that you can't hate your neighbor with your mind. Oh, stay on the. I heard that you can't hate your neighbor with your mind. With it, stay on. And we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, indeed. Amen. A brother say you can't hate your neighbor. If you got your mind, stay it on Jesus. Amen. I want to say good morning. Good morning, good morning. And it looks like somebody else had their mind on Jesus when they woke up this morning. Amen. Amen. It's a glorious day in the Lord. Uh, and I come thanking him for this opportunity to, to attempt to expound on his word. Uh, as always, I come and, and I thank, uh, after thanking the Father, I thank our leadership uh, for allowing me this. You know, I've been in, in other pulpits and, and, I, and I try to bring the word, but you know, it's nothing like coming home. Amen. Oh, I was excited because I had a chance to come back home. Amen. And that, and that is indeed my pleasure because this is indeed home for me uh, with the believers that reside here at Green Meadow Church of Christ. Yes, yes, yes. One of the things I want you to be mindful of, I got some props up here and uh, uh, just bear with me. I'm going to make sure you understand exactly where I want to go with this this morning. First, I want to tell you a little something about how I used to be when, 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 when I was young, when I was in my, in my teen years or preteen years. You know, on Sunday mornings, uh, it was like a ritual. Uh, uh, my grandmother in the kitchen, stirring around in the kitchen, right? She had a little bacon and eggs, and, and normally I'd be over in the corner eating my little Cheerios. And she'd have that, that radio on every Sunday morning. And, 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 and I remember this because it was a number one black station, WTMP. Look, I'm doing advertising. WTMP. And I remember we'd have it on WTMP. But they had a program that came on every Sunday morning called Unchained. Unchained. And in that, in that, that little episode that they have every week, I had a chance to sit there while I was eating my Cheerios, and I'd hear... How these people that had had things happen to them in life, uh, addictions and, and abuse, uh, 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 all sorts of bad things that had befallen these individuals. But, but in that emptiness, in that darkness and despair that they found themselves in, hey, they found Jesus. They found Jesus. And they were willing to come and, and tell the world what it was like to find Jesus. Now, understand, I said, my grandmother made me go to church, and I'm being truthful, I wouldn't always want to go, but she made me go to church. Now, I had been taught, and, and, and I knew Jesus. I knew who he was. I knew, Ralph, about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. I knew that. And, and the Sunday school stories, the Sunday school stories that were told, I could... Go along with them because I had heard them so much. But, but when I listened to Unchained, I, I was a little perplexed because I don't know if it was me being perplexed or being jealous because they spoke about a relationship that they had with Jesus that I hadn't experienced. I hadn't experienced what they talked about, the, the feel and the pull of Jesus in my life. I knew of him. But I didn't have that relationship. Amen. And, and see, for being a young man back then, I actually thought, well, maybe I just got to hit rock bottom sometimes, and, and maybe I'll find Jesus then. But see, little did I know that, that, that having your back to the wall, Ralph, is one way to meet him. But that's not the only way. That walking in obedience, that I'll feel his presence in my life. You know, these were people that were testifying the goodness of God in their lives. And man, I was just so powerful. One of the things that that, that testimony did in, in my scripture this morning, we're going to follow along with Paul. 
is Paul is talking, and, and this is the, one of the main points I want you to be mindful of. In, in, in the letter to the church at Ephesus, Paul is talking to believers. He's not talking to, to people that don't know Christ. In his, in his letter, he's talking to believers. And what he wants them to do is not forget. One of the things before I even get to, to the second chapter, as he led into the second chapter, Ralph, in the first chapter, he spoke mainly about the great and all of the wonderful things that God did. And he drove the point in that don't forget whatever you do that you're in Christ Jesus. He took that whole chapter and spoke strongly you're in Christ Jesus. Now, 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 they had to understand this, and I want you to, to follow with me. When he said, in Christ Jesus, if this paper was representative of me and all my shortcomings, oh, yeah, and I had a few. If I stood before the Father just in me, that's what he'd see. But what Paul was telling him, that when you're in Christ Jesus, oh, watch out now. When you in Christ Jesus, what do you see? I see the righteousness of Jesus. When God sees me now, he sees the righteousness of Jesus. When I'm in Christ Jesus. When I'm in Christ Jesus. Paul was stern and imploring these believers to understand, man, what are you doing? You're in Christ Jesus. Paul, Paul, when he, when he wrote this, this letter, I can, I, can, I can just feel him as he drove his point home. And I want to thank Brother Daniels for reading the first part uh, of my, of my uh, uh, sermon this morning. Are you sitting? Hmm. Which seat are you sitting in? Are you sitting in the right seat? We pick a lot of seats in life. But are you sitting in the right seat? As I start my, my journey with Paul's letter, I want us to be mindful of what he says in this second chapter. See, God's love for us far exceeds the loves that we can, we can even fathom. Uh, it exceeds. He is love. He is love. But let's go with Paul to the letter to the church at Ephesus. When Paul writes this letter, He's writing and he says, and you had quickened. You had quickened. Now I'm moving over here because this is what he's talking about. Come on, in these first three verses, All right. when we were dead. Yeah. You on, see, right. Paul says, and had he, he had quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. Where in time past we walked. Uh -huh. We walked according to the course of the world. Yeah. According to the prince of power of air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of, of disobedience, uh -huh. among whom also we all had our conversation and times passed in the lust of our flesh, uh -huh. fulfilling the desires of our flesh uh -huh. and the mind yes, sir. and of the mind yes, sir. and were by nature, by nature. the children mm. of wrath, nature. even as of us. Yeah. That's what this is. You know, and when he told them that they were dead, mm -hmm. one of the things I want us to be real conscious of mm -hmm. is that the dead that Paul is talking about, see, sometimes we can, we can find a little niche in life. We can get a good job. Yes, sir. We, can, we can get some extra zeros on our bank account. Uh -huh. We can drive the car that everybody else wants, but I'm driving it. And we think we got it going on, right? Yes, and don't realize we're walking dead. If I don't have a relationship with Christ. The dead that he's talking about had nothing to do with me being in a casket. He's talking about a spiritual death. He's talking about a spiritual death. And see, sometimes we have a, a way of just kind of, kind of thinking we got it going on. We get full of ourselves. And we forget who's giving us the blessings. Now, now Paul is telling them what they were. See, I'm, I'm going to show you something. Paul is using something that advertisers use today. He's using what I like to frame the before and the after. 
in the first three verses, Paul is telling us how you were. And from four to seven, he's giving you the after. You know how they do on TV. I was talking to my wife, and I, uh, the one that really jumps out at me, they got a commercial. But see, first they might, I'm bald headed, but they might show the bald head man, and he wants some hair. You see the bald head man, then that, that was the before photo. And then after the photo, he come with all kind of hair. You might see someone that's a little overweight. And the next time, the after picture, she's running down the beach in a bikini. Huh? But it's one that come on TV now that really gets my attention, right? This man got bags under his eyes. And, and, and his daughter is talking about this product. And she says she rubs it on his eyes. And in a matter of minutes, his skin is tightening up and it's gone. Boy, if you got bags on your eyes and you see that before and after, I know what you say. I got to have some of that. I got to have some of that. Paul is painting the same before and after photo. Now, he's, he told you about what you were before. Yes, sir. But in verse 4, oh, I like this. Yeah. Come on, preacher. I like this. Yes, sir. Good I, text. I, we all people sit down on this one. Good text, right, sir. Come on. Verse 4 says, but God. But God. Yeah. Oh! Yes, sir. But God. Yes, sir. Tell y'all something about this. Y'all know how I am about words. Y'all know how I am. I always want to get a definition of this, that, and the other in, in my lessons. But God. But God. Now, I'm not an a, a, a English scholar or grammar, but I know that but was a conjunction, right? right? It's a conjunction. So what I did, I said, if it's a conjunction, let's see what Webster got to say about it. Webster told me that but is used to introduce a phrase or clause, watch this, contradicting what has already been said. So, but God, remember what I talked about over there. Paul says, but God, but God. But the one that really I like is the other definition. It says, it's used to indicate Here's a word I love. The impossibility of anything other than what is about to be said. <laughs> the impossibility of what is about to be said. And see, what I want you to see is, but God. See, see, I'm going to show you how to use that. That was a time in my life where I, I, I wasn't in the pulpit. I wasn't living the life that I should have lived. And there was a time there was some shame in my life. And, and I didn't want to face that thing. But see, now if someone were to come to me and say, I remember Brother Story or Mike, or they used to call me Frog. Frog, I remember you. you know what I can say, Ralph? But God. But God. And I thank him because I know where I come from. But God. See, when you come to me now and you talk about me, I don't deny it. I don't. But God. But God, let's see what Paul tells the church at Ephesus. He tells them, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love when he loved who? Us. Even, even when we were dead. You didn't have to do nothing. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ by grace. Grace. You're saved. Grace, I know we try to do a lot of things, and there's nothing wrong with good works. But the word tells me, grace, by grace. Verse 6 is the one I want us to get to. And had raised us up together. Raised us up together and made us what, Marikas? Sit together. Sit. Boy, feel good in this seat here. Sit together with Christ. I mean, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 7, verse 7 goes on to, to tell that in ages to come, he might show exceeding, exceeding riches his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Which seat are you sitting in? Which seat are you sitting in? And it's a choice to be made. There is a choice to be made. One of the things that I want us to always know, that if I see myself as God sees me, 
If I see myself, not I might see me, but if I see myself as God see me, I'll be able to walk around and present myself with that boldness that's spoke about in the word. That boldness that's spoke about in Hebrews 13. You can turn with me. We're going to flip a little bit. But in Hebrews 13 and 6, and in Hebrews 13 and 6, I like this scripture. It tells me, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Huh, ain't that good news? The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what 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 man shall do unto me. I, I, I think we need to post that up there on Constitution Avenue. <laughs> Let Trump see. I'm not scared of what man. Oh, I'm not scared. Cause who's my helper? The Lord is my helper. That ought to give us confidence. You know how when we was young and. And you get in some trouble, you know how you do, and, and the odds was against you, you say, wait till I go get my cousin. And when you knew you had your cousin or your brothers coming, you got bold yes, because you know you had some backup. Yes, well, you as Christians got the ultimate backup. Yes, Lord yes, is my helper. Yes, oh, I can stick my chest out. I'm not a bodybuilder, but I can stick it out because the Lord is my helper. Oh, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, it's, it's your faith walk. Our faith walk, brother, is strengthened most, not when things are going good, but when things are going bad. When your back is to the wall, can you still praise God? No matter what your circumstances look like, can you praise God? I, I, I know it's easy when, when the sun is shining bright. I say, oh, God is good. But what about when things and the refrigerator is a little bad. And, and the kids aren't doing what you want. And things at the job going crazy. Can you still praise God? Can you still praise him? In spite of what it looks like. See, God, the Bible tells us about seasons. I mean, even this morning, we were talking about all this bad weather. Understand, when, when, when the Bible speaks about seasons, they pass. They pass. Hey, just like we called this morning, and this, this is January, oh, just wait till you, I know some of us can't wait till June, huh, when you ain't got to put it on, we'll be through this season. It's only a cycle when we stop. It's only a cycle when we stop and allow ourselves to be locked into that. Uh, I, I tell you, I, I saw uh, uh, the, the guy on the radio said, uh, and I know you guys have probably heard him, Steve Harvey, but he said a, a, a guy gave him a plaque to put in his office. And he said, the, the plaque said, when you're going through hell, don't stop. Don't put it in park. Don't put it in park. you only for a season. Keep on going. Keep on going. And there are going to be times that all of us are going to feel like we're going. My helper. Look, look what he does. Come, come with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. See, one of the things God does for us is he, he tells us how to do what he wants us to do. Uh, one of the transformations that, that I want to talk about now is a transformation that comes about. In 2 Corinthians, in the chapter 3, I'm going to read, and I want you to be mindful. Some of, some of you have the NIV and the American Standard. I'm reading, I'm not reading out of that, that one today. Uh, I'm reading out of King James Version. All right, 3 and 18. Here we go. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass of glory, the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, what I want you to see is that in the NIV, in American Standard, rather than saying changed, the word that they used is being. Being transformed. Being transformed. I did some of my investigation uh, of that word being, Ralph. Uh, it told me that some of the old English and some Latin, that that word derived from the word that I know we're familiar with, the metaphor, but it comes more to the word that we're all familiar with, metamorphos. Metamorphos. I know all of us that's 
got a GED or high school diploma, then heard of metamorphosis. We know what it's like when that, that caterpillar is kind of bump, bump, bumping his way through life. He's not the most glamorous creature. He's just kind of making his way. Not one that is really appealing to the eye. But he goes through a metamorphosis. Ah, oh, when he goes through that metamorphosis, he comes out a wonderful, beautiful butterfly. And he's graceful. And he flies around. And he has beautiful colors. I mean, even to the point where there are artists that have taken the butterfly and put him on campus. The butterfly. But he didn't start out as a butterfly. He had to go through the metamorphosis. It's all, it's all familiar to me when I think about that. One of the biggest hurdles, one of the biggest hurdles in doing what God wants us to do and admitting our faults. Because, see, getting on the road to that metamorphosis, you got to do some, some honest self-evaluation. I got, I got four ups. I got four ups, Ralph, that you got to be if you want to get on the road to transformation. Yes, yes, I got, I got four ups. You got to be fed up. Oh, you got to own up to what you did. You got to offer up. And most importantly, you got to lift him up in prayer to your concerns. Oh, you got to do that. You got to own up to it. See, I come up with all kinds of excuses, and I put it on you, Ralph, when I did. But, the, but, but this tells me I got to own up. God wants me to own up and tell him what I did. All them four ups you got to do. But when you do them, I want you to know, Satan's job is to hinder us from being honest. He don't want that. Uh, uh, one of the things I want you to always remember, and I talked about this to my, my grandson, about condemnation and delivery. Satan, Satan lives in condemnation. He lives there. He wants you to hold your head down when you look back on your past. And he wants you to look, look and be ashamed. You know, don't do nothing. Just, just feel bad. He wants you to feel bad. That's condemnation. But conviction, conviction is when, when the Father shines a light on what you're doing wrong so that you can do better. That's conviction. That helps you grow. That helps you be a better person. Oh, the Father isn't shining a light to say, Mike, look at you. Look at what you're doing. He's saying, Mike, look at this. This is not pleasing to me. You can do better. Conviction is not the same. Satan lives in, 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 in trying to distort things. That's his job. You know, I, I, I look at how we approach life, and I think about some of us are on our way to heaven, and, and we're not even enjoying the trip. That's right. We're on our way to heaven, and we ain't enjoying the trip. Life, life is a blessing from Christ every day. And y'all know I say this all the time. Every breath we have to give thanksgiving for. Of course, I use the example. I was just in the hospital over a month ago, and, and when I had pneumonia, man, I, I found out that was real true. Pele, when I couldn't take, couldn't take them deep breaths, boy, I tell you, you get to thinking, man, just little things. I got to be thankful every day, no matter what I'm going through, that I'm a child of the Most High. I'm a child of the Most High. I, I, I know, I know, and, 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 and it should be fuel for me to know that God is my helper. That ought to be fuel to whatever I face. One first John 4 and 19. We love him because he what? First loved us. Boy, ain't that good to know that he loved us. It's wonderful to know somebody loves you. And you know, it's one thing for us to read that in the Bible. And 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 if I were to, to go through this crowd right now and say, Does somebody love you? Or who loves you? You know, we speak to Ralph. I tell you what, what one, one way you want to find out where, where somebody know who loves them. When you, when you put an application in and they say, who's the emergency contact? Watch out. You're not going to put nobody's name on that. It might not even get up out of bed. You're going to put somebody's name on that that you know care. That you know loves you. Oh, you know Cheryl Storer's name is on mine. Yeah, I know, because I know whatever's going on, whatever she's doing, if they call her and I'm in trouble or I'm hurt, I know she's coming 
Do I have to think about it? No, because I know she loves me. And I thank you, baby. I thank you. But, boy, it's a wonderful thing to know that the Father, that the Father loves us all. And he is our helper. Oh, it should fuel you in your walk to know you got a helper. Oh, I tell you, I tell you. When, when, if you don't believe, if you don't believe, he really loves you. Turn with me to Luke. Luke 12 and 7. Now, this is just an example I want to show you. I, I like this scripture, and, and I know it's one that we've heard before. And I'm in Luke 12 and 7. There's something said that I need you to see in Luke 12 and 7. All right, I'll get there in a minute, y'all. It says, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Okay, okay. It says the numbers of hairs on your head are numbered. Ralph, I, I tell you, it didn't say, now I know I ain't got none, but it, it didn't say he knows how many. It said the hairs of your head are numbered. Whether you know it or not, there's a one and a two and a three. He know which one was first. That's how much he loves us. That's how intricate he is in the making and caring for each one of us. He's not something that he just made and threw. I know the hairs on your head. Boy, that's something to tell somebody. I know how many hairs are on your head. Because, see, I know he loves me. I know. I know he loves me. In Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 29 and 11, and, and a lot of us are familiar with the scripture, God speaks about having a plan. He speaks about having a plan for our life. And what he tells me in Jeremiah 29, 11 is that that plan is not for calamity. It's for good. He knows the plan. Now watch this. Now stay with me. I don't know the plan. But God tells me in his word, he has a plan, Ralph. And he says he knows. And it's not for calamity. It's, it's for good. So, see, sometimes in life, when you just don't understand, how did I get here? How did I get in this relationship? How, how did I get on this thankless job? How did I, just what's going on in my life? Know that God has a plan. Don't measure your life by these little, little hurdles that may present themselves. You got to remember who your helper is. And most importantly, that he has a plan. Oh, it's good to know. I ain't got to know because I trust him. The word tells me he can't lie. So if he told me he's going to be my helper, my because I can go where I got to go. I can face what I got to face. Because, boy, look at here. I got a helper. Hey, man, you got to know that God has a plan. He has a plan. When Paul, when Paul put his pen to parchment and wrote this letter, to the church at Ephesus some 2,000 years ago. This same letter, this same letter that Paul wrote, it's just as valid today. It's just as advantageous. It's just as profound today as I stand here before you, remembering where you were and remembering what God did. The same letter. It's as if it's not me standing here, but Paul bringing the same message. That's the wonderful thing about the gospel, isn't it? It's not just good one way. It's good all the time. And it stands the test of time. Oh, 2,000 years ago. And it's just as valid today for each one of us. Oh, I tell you, Scripture, Scripture, Scripture really amazes me as I go through when I'm looking at that. But Scripture tells us, and, and I think Russell alluded to this, about seeking God first. Scripture tells us to seek God first in Matthew 6 and 33. But, but, but what I, wanna, I want you to really 
look at is in Proverbs. In Proverbs. In Proverbs 8 and 17, I think it is. Yeah, 8 and 17. In Proverbs 8 and 17, when we talk about looking for solutions in life, a lot of times we'll look everywhere else when a problem arises. We'll call everybody else when a problem arises. And it's almost like the last resort as well. We can, I heard someone say they had exhausted everything, and he said, well, we can pray. Huh? Praying ought to have been the first thing you did. How has that ever come to the point where praying is the last thing? You done called Joe Blow, you done called Mary Sue, and they can't help you. Now you tell me you're going to call the Father? Call him first. He say, seek me first. See, when you seek a, or when you seek a solution, you're going to come up short. When you find the Father, the solution will be in him. Seek him first. Pray first. I couldn't believe. Well, I guess all we can do is pray. What? You got to be out your mind. All we can do. It's a blessing to be able to pray. Grace says I can stand boldly. I can call God on what he said. One of the things we got to do is be strong enough and bold enough when God tells me that if I, you, you said it, if I ask for it, he'll give it to me. I got to stand in front of the throne of grace and say, Father, you said. I got to call God on what he said. I got to say it. You said you'll be my helper. Father, I don't know what's happening, but Father, I trust you. And it's in that times when things are going crazy and the father know I want to turn and run. But I don't because I trust him. And I know this is just a season. And I'm, I'm reluctantly going, but I'm going. I'm going on ahead. I'm going to keep on stepping because I trust you, father. I trust you to do what you said you're going to do. Call him on it. See, one of the things you can do in calling him on it, that let him know you're, you're studying his word. See, I can't call God on nothing, Ralph, if I ain't opened that book then. I can't tell him what he said if I ain't been in the book. So you got to show yourself approved by being in the book. I, I got lost then, y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 8 and uh, 17. Watch this. I love them, okay, that love me and those that seek me, what? Late. After he talked to everybody else, early, early shall find me. He said, early, early call me. Don't call me late. Don't call me as an afterthought. No, sir. I have the solutions. I have the solutions. And if you have the confidence, it's going to all be good. Oh, it's going to be good. I like that in Proverbs. I like that. One of the things that we as Christians in our walk have to be is confident. We, 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 we talk about being victorious. Act like it. Act like it. When we, when we coming from sporting events, you can tell the people, you can tell the people in the crowd that team won. They're happy and they're cheering. And you can tell the ones that lost, they kicking the can. How are you walking? How are you walking? Are you excited to be a Christian? Huh? Are you excited that you got a helper that you can call on that cannot lie? Boy, that's wonderful. See, I know some of y'all that like me and know me. Y'all might make me a promise, and something may happen that you can't do it. But, boy, I know somebody that when he make a promise, it's a done deal. It's absolute. When God says it's so, it's so. But God, but God, in spite of what Satan makes it look like, but God. When, when somebody from now on, I want y'all to remember that, but God, when somebody tries to confront you and say something against you and, and what your past was, or, girl, I remember when you, but God, oh, but God, shut them down. Man, I, I don't believe you going to no church. You ain't, you ain't about no church. You still drink, but God, but God. Boy, I tell you, that's a wonderful thing. To be able to say, because he is in my corner now. Oh, when I call him, Ralph, he is, man. It's wonderful to know. I might call some of y'all and get an answer machine. But when I call him, 
Oh, he's there, Maricus. He's always there. Oh, those nights, those tear-stained pillars. He's listening. And you know something else? You know something else I, I like about, about the Father and, 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 and Jesus when there are times you hurt so bad. You hurt so bad that you can't even put it in words. All you can do is just, mm, 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 mm. Oh, he takes that, mm, 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 and he presents it to the Father. He breaks that and he puts it in words. I don't even have to say it. Just the pain. Mm, y'all know that. Mm, it's one that hurts. It's one make you squeeze one eye. It hurts. And you can't even put it in words. Oh, Jesus can take that thing and present it to the Father. Oh, ain't that wonderful to know that even when old Mike can't, can't say it, Brother Thompson, when I can't put it in words, when, when that tear-stained pillow is under my head and it's damp, that I can look up at the ceiling and say, Father, mm, 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 and it's a done deal. Oh, he's a good God. He's a good God. And we got to walk around like he's a good God. As I, as I approach my end, I, I just, I need us to know that, 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 that God is for us. You know, he's, he's not an entity that, that sits on high and waits for us to do wrong. Uh, that, that scripture that I read that it talked about, I got to get over here to say this one. He said they became children of wrath. Wrath. Can you imagine having God's wrath upon you? Boy, I, my Rikas, I, I don't mind you getting mad with me. You know, we might get, I don't want God's wrath upon me. He said when we were dead, we would, God's wrath. Oh, that's, that's not where I want to be, wrath. Not the wrath of God. No, sir. I don't think that's a place any of us indeed wants to be. As I, as I open to, the, to my invitation, I want you to, something I'm real, yesterday was real eye-opening experience for me. I had a closing that I wanted to say. And I had something that I thought I was on the right page. But see, that's the reason you discern the word by studying the word, by reading commentaries, by talking, by getting godly counsel. And I found out real quick that exactly where I, the corner I wanted to turn Russell in this lesson, I wasn't quite right. And I was able to find it. And boy, shine the light. I went flying in the kitchen, told my baby, baby, I got this thing right and I'm okay. I got it right. And what I'm talking about, it's found in all uh, Matthew 16 and 24, Mark 8 and 34, Luke 9 and 23. They all speak of taking up your cross and following me. Taking up your cross and following me. Yes, yes. See, see, I got locked in. Right? I say, I know what that means. I say, I know that means when, when you're in a marriage and, and it just ain't working that you stick it out that you're bearing your cross, that when you're on a job that don't appreciate you and you're underpaid, that you're sticking it out. When you got illnesses and stuff happening to you and you're sticking it out, I'm thinking that's bearing the cross. But as I studied, as I studied, some 2,000 years ago when Jesus, oh, Jesus, when Jesus going up the hill of Gagatha, Carrying that cross. When he said, the cross, bear the cross. When those people in the first century saw the cross, I know it's symbolic. 2,000 years later, when we look at that, as I said, all those things that I just spoke about, we do. We symbolize those things on the cross. Bearing it. Going through bad situations. Uh, I bear that thing, and I, and I bear it. But see, one of the things that when we talk about bearing is that even when it's bad, are you praising Jesus? Are you praising him when it's not that good? See, all of us go through some things. But, but I'm going to get back to my story here. That cross. When, when, when he said, take up your cross. Watch this. He, he was on a hill. And he was carrying his own cross. In the first century, when they had a cross, all of the criminals were carrying 
the device that would be their demise up a hill. And that cross represented one thing and one thing only, and that was death. Death is what that cross meant. Cross meant death. So when Jesus tells us to take up the cross, the death that he's talking about, it's not always, it's not always the physical death. Because I'm talking on, he was talking to us really on a spiritual plane. Because what the death he wants you to deal with is a death to self. A death to that inner man. That's the cross I got to pick up. I got to get this up in here. What I want to do, how I want to do it, and when I want to do it. I got to walk in obedience. I got to find a way to be happy when it comes to pleasing God. I got to find joy in being obedient. See, when he said, take up your cross and follow me, I got to know what that cross meant. And see, what it slipped me, Ralph, was that I didn't, rep didn't realize that cross represented death. And when he said, take up your cross, each one of us got one. We got to die to this inner man. Because he'll take you straight to hell. It's a, it's a scripture where, where Jesus tells us to, I, I'm, 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 I'm going, I'm going. Jesus tells us to, to put the yoke, put his yoke on. His burdens are light. I, I got to tell you something real quick about that yoke. In, in olden times, in biblical times, when they had that yoke, Brother Maricus, it was out there in them farming lands, and they had oxen. And they would, they would till the land, you see. And when they put that yoke, if they only had one oxen and they put that yoke on him, he could pull, but the load was heavy. And he couldn't, Ralph, he couldn't go, couldn't go straight. But when they put another oxen in there, the two of them would go in the straight and the right direction. Huh? They equal, they divided the load. Now, when Jesus tells us about that yoke that we're talking about, he don't have a burden to carry now. He's there to help us. He's there to help us go straight. He's there to be right beside you in that yoke. You're not alone and all over the place. But Jesus is carrying you in that yoke. Know that everything that he does, everything he says is for our betterment. Everything. Everything Jesus did for us is for our good. As I, as I begin my close as I speak to my close before I sing my song of invitation. I need you to be mindful that, that God loves you. Yes, he loves you. And, and, it, and it's a thing that we got to stand in confidence knowing how much he loves us. See, from the beginning of time, there was a plan for each one of us. Awesome things happened in the garden that, that threw a monkey wrench in there, but that is what it is. But boy, to know that Calvary happened. Calvary! It happened for each one of us. And we got to carry that daily. You got to die to yourself daily. That old man that wants to do some things. See, one of the things Satan does, and, and I, I'm on the way out the door. One of the things Satan do, we, we can't say, oh, I don't like sin. Uh, you know, we do things like that because it's pleasurable. We do things that are Outside of being obedient to God because it feels good. See, that's what Satan plays to. It's popular. People do it. Everybody else do it. I can do it too. Die to self. Die to doing what everybody else is doing. Do what God wants you to do. Be obedient to the word of God. Remember them four ups. Remember them. One of the things that God has made easy is coming to him and being added to the body. He made that easy. You know, I often say, they say, the key to life is simplicity. And he's made it real easy. And he said, you got to hear the word where well, you've heard the word this morning. You got to believe the word. I mean, I'm not talking about just today and then tomorrow morning you're out there cussing somebody out. You got to believe it and it affects your life. You got to believe it down in your soul. You got to repent and confess. That's where them four ups come in. You got to own up to some things. You got to confess with your mouth that Jesus is the son of the living God. Oh, boy, and I tell you, you see the way earlier this microphone was kind of acting up, and they had to go get a, a battery raft to put in it to get it back right. 
Well, see, them four things that you just did, when you, when you go down in that water, oh, you're going to get activated. <laughs> oh, with a battery that won't run out. Oh, you're going to get some new blood running through your veins. That metamorphosis that I talked about, oh, we can be that beautiful butterfly, a brand new creature, a new creature. One that when people see you, they have to take a second look. Is that still Ralph? Ralph, you? Because believe this, no matter how many, and I've learned this a few times that I went back to Florida over the years, no matter what you do, how hard you try, there are some people that are going to always see you as you were. You can't change that. You can't change it. But what you can say is, but God, but God, let them have what they want. Let them say what they will. But God, but God, if you're here today and, and, and you want to be able to say, but God, we're getting ready to sing a song of invitation. Uh, uh, as, as, as we sing that song, I want you to think about the things that I've said this morning. I want you to think about those four ups, because you got to be fed up. And I know that in my life I was. I was fed up with, with the way I was going. Oh, I'm so glad Jesus was there, that outstretched hand. He had been following me and nudging me all my life. See, that's the, that's the sad thing about when you're out there in the world without Jesus. You think you got it going on. Uh, like I said, you think you're doing something. And, 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 and I'm going to say this example, and it's one that me and my wife talked about that I, I think about. When I was in the world, and I was out there, and I was involved in drugs, and I was doing some things that was contrary to the word of God. And you know how we talk about and sympathize with people that are homeless. Hmm? All of us got a soft spot, you know, and me too. And I remember thinking, and I told my wife that we, we I didn't even realize. I'm going to show you how blind Satan had me. Ralph, I was living because I had a bag. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I was living a few nights here. And a few nights here. Then somebody else would let me come over here and stay a few nights. And I thought I had it going on because I had a little paper in my pocket. But you know what? I was homeless. I didn't even have a place to call my own. I didn't even see it. I thought I had it going on, Pele, because I was taking care of it. It was only with me because I had what I had. But I didn't even see that I didn't have a home. That's how bad Satan can blind you to walk, have you walking proudly right into disaster. As we stand now and sing this song of invitation, I want you to give heed to what God has done and what he will do in your life. Softly and, tenderly, and tenderly, oh, oh Jesus, he is, is calling, Lord, he is calling, for the sinner to come, oh yes, you know that I am one of his children, y'all, and he sent me to tell you, don't put off today, no, for tomorrow, road. he is calling for the sinner, Lord. He is calling for the saints. He is calling for the one who can see. Oh, yes. He said, come to the Savior and bow down in sorrow. Don't put off today, Lord, for tomorrow. Our role. I'm singing, Lord, softly, softly and, tenderly, and tenderly. Oh, Jesus, I'm calling. Lord, he's calling for the sinner to come. Tomorrow's not promised to nobody. You know that we make I, a lot of plans, I'm one of his children, but it's all behind grace that you will to see tomorrow. So don't put off. The song tells you, don't put it off. And he's calling, constantly calling. Watch this. It said, death should come to you in the middle of the night. While you sleep and find you asleep. 
And your soul, and your soul ain't right. right. Oh, what and a place to be. This should happen to you. Oh, Lord, there's, there's nothing, nothing more than you, you can do. So, so don't, don't put off today, today Lord, for tomorrow. tomorrow. Softly, Softly and tenderly, Jesus. Is calling, is calling for the sinner to come. Oh, yes, you know that I am a children, Lord, and he sent me to tell you, don't put off today, Lord, for tomorrow.